Perfect. Um, so sound and cultural objects are omnipresent in all cultures of this world, which is why the project of the research center, Digital Organology, and my PhD project are dedicated to making this class of objects available for digital researchers. This research center is located at the Musical Instrument Museum of Leipzig University and has the second largest collection in Europe um, after Brussels which is why we are sitting at a good source here and we're trying to develop new strategies and methodologies um, in several projects to achieve the goal of making these objects digitally accessible. But what is organology? Organology, if you, would have, you wouldn't have seen this title, you might think about medicine or <laughs> anything similar. <laughs> but we're actually dealing with musical instruments. Um, this field of musicology is focusing not only on the acoustics and the materialistic aspects, but also on biographies around the instrument makers, classification systems, patents for use technologies, or even artworks on these instruments. There are a lot in historic instruments. But uh, let me show you what we are doing in digital organology. In the previous testing project, we had the task to digitize 36 historical key instruments, including one of the three oldest pianos in the world from Christofori, um, Bartolomeo Christofori. Um, and my task was to capture the sounds of these various instruments. But there were many other tasks for the team as we were working with special instruments like this one. Um, in the early 20th century, there were three um, self-playing pianos, maybe you know from Western movies, um, so like the introduction from Westworld. And um, they have highly complex mechanical and pneumatic systems, and also we want to understand it, and we digitized these piano rolls inside this piano. And before we had to um, clean it, I didn't do it, but uh, our team members did it, and measure its data. All of this to um, scan these piano rolls with a line scanner, and um, also I had to record 300 of them on this piano you just saw. And also we did some measurements from the photographies we took from the instruments, and we have this platform called Music Explorer, which is something we're very proud of. We use it on a daily basis, and uh, we can manage the objects or other objects in the world. And we have a database with the properties, what happened to the instrument, when was it built, when was it bought, traded, destroyed, um, yeah. And we can also play it in the browser. And it's not all uh, just about objects, it's also about people and person networks, institutions, and the whole database of our multimodal data. So um, we can link everything in this platform and yeah, we really like to use it. And um, my task was also to create the first virtual instrument of a, a historical harpsichord from MIAI. And these sounds um, were used as a VSTI instrument or a standalone application. And they just don't reproduce the samples. They also include the mechanical logic of this instrument. So um, if you shift some things in this instrument, you get another sound because the strings are, it's another string getting activated. And, um, also, there are some various um, simulation techniques like um, creating resonance sounds when there's a specific uh, string activated and so on. So um, just, this was the first project. This was the testing project. Now we're working on the Discourse project, which is focusing on mechanical disc players. And this is where I started to do the um, photogrammetry about these objects to create, to combine the sounds, this media, and the 3D object to create a virtual representation of, of it. Um, but um, and the thing is that we work with um, this media data, like the circular disks. But before, we have worked with those piano rolls. And um, my colleague is working on digitizing them and converting them to MIDI data um, with different approaches. Because the piano roll is completely different. It's like a vertical 50 meter long uh, image file, which is um, yeah very heavy. And the circular information is encoded in rings. And we take the degree uh, from the starting point of uh, like of the, this yeah, hole and the end point. And then we can decode the timing information and the node information. So, um, Corey, that would be nice to analyze these things. Uh, we have like 2,400 piano rolls. So a real pianist played them 100 years ago. And it would be nice to um, analyze them, because this is what we want to do now. <laughs> But also, uh, do we have sound? Sorry. I'm going to start it again. OK, if it doesn't work. 
it's not a problem. Um, so we have in the museum, we have these objects um, very silent in these um, glass cabinets. And with these combined, <laughs> I just want to let you hear it. So um, yeah, as you see, we can um, use this multimodal virtualized, virtualized object with all its media to create an augmented reality object in a museum above this very silent object, but it is still able to produce sounds. So if you virtualize them, we can make it the sounds alive. If you work for a musical instrument museum, you don't hear anything. It's like very silent and you maybe hear some sounds when you press the touchpad. Uh, but this new approach for multimodal virtualization is um, yeah, something I'm working on. And um, we can also do it in virtual reality environments. So here are some objects hidden and they're all virtualized so you can play any of them. And this one is a special one. Just a short clip. <laughs> so it's a MIDI file playing a virtual object. Yes. So here are some other objects inside this cabinet. And so this was uh, the background for my PhD project, which I started one and a half years ago. Uh, it's called Modavis. And now I want to focus on pipe organs. Um, this, um, as they are the most endangered class, as they are stationary, so you can't move them fast. Um, they are at risk to be destroyed by military conflicts, climate change consequences, or by um, economic crisis and urban developments, and which is happening right now a lot. And so this PhD project aims on pipe organs, and I want to develop strategies how to scan these very huge objects, how to virtualize them, how to digitize them, and the environment, because the building of the pipe organ is also part of the sound. It's like a resonance body, and it's installed for exactly this building. And um, yeah, so I'm focusing on the development of a new standard called Virtual Acoustic Object. And there's a framework with lots of softwares and tools, but I can't go into detail. But um, the main point is that I want to uh, create this new standard, uh, which combines multimodal data into one archive file with uh, structures that are standardized. And yeah, so this is the virtual acoustic object, which includes audio files, 3D data, measurements, events, identifiers to external databases, for example, music player, um, or media files derived from this digitization process. So this was my first approach with a smartphone scan. Um, so this is a nice object example for um, pipe organ virtualization. As you can see, there are lots of artworks pipes and it's like, um, yeah, 400 years old organ. But first, some um, introduction to how organs actually look like inside. Um, so there are many pipes and it is, this is a, like a very small model and um, every pipe has another material, shape, um, position. Sometimes it's completely elsewhere in a cathedral and uh, yeah, it's a quite complex object class. Also, there are complex mechanics, so if you play the key very fast, it could produce a different sound, or if you just hold it <laughs> half of the key depth. So they can look like this, they can be very, this is just a small one, actually. Um, uh, yeah, so in reality, they're also installed in different architectures. So I'm also interested in the building around it um, and how it is installed inside. Um, and this multimodal aspect means that I can also um, link to external identifiers, for example, the artwork, which was this one was based on a uh, drawing by Johannes Tradanus, and it's in the Rijksmuseum, so I can link to this Rijksmuseum ID, and yeah, this information is very hidden in some organological literature, so I want to make it accessible, and I can annotate this 3D model with this information. So this VAO concept, the virtual acoustic object, um, and it's a management software and encoding and decoding. So all of these um, information is structured um, with a, um, yeah, and it's always consistent, so there's no possibility to create some trash data into it. Um, it's checked and validated, and after this, we um, have an interface to create after this BIO file, we can use Unity, as you've seen before, this augmented reality or VR applications are from Unity. 
or we can import it to the Music Explorer, to standalone applications, and so on. And I'm currently working on a web and app development um, platform. And this is how it looks like if we link an audio data. So I have a recording of one pipe, and I want to link it to the 3D model and the segment of the key, which is related to the sound and this pipe. And also to the restoration report or to any document mentioning this key. So we can link everything. Um, and all is included in this file and with an internal data relationship system. So um, this allows us to do this here. So it's another application. Just look at the keys and at the stops on the left side. So this is just a MIDI file playing. So these were the sounds of the original organ in the museum. So um, the keys were moving because I have this data relations. So um, if I have a MIDI signal, I can trigger a chain of activations and I can define them. So how deep can I press a key? Uh, everything is measured or known, or you can do it as you want for creative purposes. Um, so this is the um, animation. I can convert MIDI files to animation files for these virtual acoustic objects. So everything can be played in it. And there are some complex uh, spectral similarity, similarity conversions. So if I have the organ one, so a piece was played on a organ one, which is quite huge. And I want to play it on this small organ. I need to convert the pipes that are different based on the similarity of the sound. So um, this is also part of this conversion process. So now um, we have this organ in our museum. And it's a Silverman organ, a very famous organ builder. And obviously, it's not uh, meant, uh, it's not its purpose to be in a museum and silent and just there. But we know the original building, and for example, I can sc um, scan the building through photogrammetry, like in this case. And my, um, I wanted to create an acoustical environment, a virtual acoustic environment, just using photogrammetry models of buildings, interiors. So, um, what if I want to? Um, transfer this organ of this museum into this virtual acoustic environment. Um, so I had to develop a pipeline for this. And uh, you can read more about it in the proceedings of the Cultural Heritage and New Technologies Conference. Um, I don't go much into detail, but um, it's basically about detecting surfaces based on the photographies and using two-dimensional pixel to three-dimensional point reprojection um, and to assign material coefficients. and. After that, I can um, produce impulse responses, which is like uh, the sound of the reflection. So it's like an audio file, which you can convolve with um, other sounds. But um, we can talk about it later, maybe. And this is just a look at the pipeline. And I want to extend it by the segment anything model from Meta, which is pretty good to detect um, objects and photographs. So. Um, I created the app for this augmented auditory reality. So if I'm in a church and I have this app, I can see this organ, but I can't hear it. So this would be the solution to um, detect the position, which I can use with the simulation data from before. And then I can like listen from the player position or from this position. Which is in real time organization uh, requires to produce the simulation files before, but I can interpolate between these points in three dimensions by using this barycentric interpolation. And yeah, it's working quite well, but I still have to evaluate it. So I'm still sorry. <laughs> so now um, the project I was working on uh, is some interactive organ map. Um, so I have created a database of like 50 to 60,000 organs, including all its data, technical data, and the building around it, the translation to the building. And um, yeah, so it's a very intuitive way to deal with uh, cultural heritage um, of this kind. And as you can see, there are all the pipes listed on the left side. And yeah, much more data. 
Also, you can view the historical borders, which is important, especially for Austria, Hungary, um, and Southeast Europe. It's um, very nice to see the cultural areas, how they developed. And um, we can do statistics on this database. So, mostly we have German organs, 30,000. Um, I think, yeah, 46% of the countries are analyzed, and we can do mechanical data um, analysis. We can see which organs were built at which period. So Germany had a peak at 1957, and Slovenia, for example, had it now, has a now, a uh, very high peak. Um, so if you think about the Soviet era, then there are some historical reasons for this. And this is how an organ object looks like. So we have lots of relations um, to the building, to the builder, person networks around it, who was the teacher of the organ builder, who are the colleagues, where did he learn, where did he work. Um, also, um, we have the properties like materials and so on. And um, this is why we need linked data on this platform as well. So this is, for example, this church you've seen before, and you can directly view the 3D model of it inside this um, small window. You can, of course, you can do it in full screen. Um, yes, so <laughs> this is the corresponding uh, 3D model of the interior. And my hope is that we get more accessible technologies like neural radiance fields so we can scan buildings a lot and then we can build up this database and link to it. So um, we can yeah, build up this database. But, so um, originally in this database, I just had the building name and the town name and the organ data. So um, I wanted to know the coordinates of it. So I did some queries on the uh, OpenStreetMap overpass. Then I was searching for religious and cultural facilities in a radius around this coordinates because it doesn't always work because churches have like the same name all the time. And with the Wikidata, I could, um, uh, I was searching for the nearest name of the church and the building. So um, I could uh, link and retrieve the data, like the architectural style of the building. So we can do more analysis of like which organ is in the Byzantine, Byzantine uh, architecture or, or, yeah, just view more data. Um, yeah, so this is on the left side, we have this object, for example. And on the right, we can, this is our museum. We can also set the coordinates to the exact position in the room. Yes. Um, also, we have a link to the music player where we can see the organ builder and all this data, like the networks, um, who he worked, where he worked, um, I mean, for how he worked. And so we can see where exactly this organ builder has had his workplaces or institutions and the whole network. So when this API is getting evolved, um, I want to link these two platforms to get this network data. Okay, so we also have, <laughs> with the database, we can have linguistic problems because in every country they have different names for the same pipes, but um, there's a possibility to solve it. Um, so principles for, for example, the pipes you see in the first row, but everything else is hidden inside. Um, so um, I had to use some audio analysis and statistical analysis to find um, the pipes and to do it non-linguistic, um, just based on the sound. So my next approach is um, to capture these sounds, find them, collect them, because there are lots of um, private collections and I want to accumulate them so I can do some more statistical analysis on the audio and the sound to um, cluster these sounds, for example. So I can find, um, I can identify organ builders, institutions, and I want to implement it into this um, map, this interactive map. Yes, so it's, uh, I still have some things to do, so I still have one and a half years to go, but um, some of this works, um, yeah, I want to work with the materials, the origins, the endangerment, because there are some colonial backgrounds about as metals, tin from Southeast Asia, for example, and yeah, the climate change risks. So I want to visualize much more, and I'm always, yeah, if you want to help me with some things, feel free to contact me, and um, yes, thank you.